Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Weather Center Nazario. Thank you very much for taking some time out of your Saturday afternoon to join me for this update video, because let me tell you now, guys, we have some very, very important updates to pass along to you. We're going to skip a lot of the formalities, so I do apologize, but please like this video, share this video, share this channel, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Turn your notifications on, because if these trends we're going to discuss today continue, there's going to be a lot of viable information you do not want to miss out on. We're going to start close to home in the Gulf of Mexico, guys, because over the last several days, we've been discussing potential Gulf Coast development off the Texas-Louisiana coastline in way of a low-pressure center, our next bonafide El Nino system, and today it's looking far more aggressive as we look at our 12Z models. We're starting off on the 12Z European, and if you look off the Texas-Louisiana coast, you can see a very, very strong system with a lot of heavy rain associated with it beginning to develop right about the time we roll into Monday into Tuesday, pushing east towards Florida, and as it does so, it continues to deepen down and increase its widespread threat for precip and heavy rain, especially as it tracks across the Florida Peninsula. So all in all, this is good news, but however, if we continue to see these trends increasing the amount of rainfall we could likely see with it, this could possibly lead right into flood territory because of the drought we've been experiencing along the Gulf Coast and here in the state of Florida for that matter. Too much all at once is never a good thing. We want to kind of bring it in steadily, and in this case, if this system decides to bomb out like the models are anticipating, not only in the Gulf, but especially as it moves up the mid-Atlantic states, that could be a little bit of a problem. If you take a look at the 850 millibar wind flow as well, we could get kind of sporty here in the Sunshine State. We're seeing winds upwards of 40, 45 knots in the mid-levels of the environment, and with all that heavy rainfall expected with this system, it is likely some of this will be mixed down to the surface. So I wouldn't be surprised if we get some gale force winds out here, not only in the southern portions of the peninsula, but here in the west and east coast and central Florida for that matter, as this moves across throughout Wednesday and into Thursday. Thankfully, it should be completely out of the area by the time we roll into next weekend, giving way to some pretty good weather as it does so. So not only will the drought be alleviated, but next weekend should be pretty good in terms of overall intense weather activity, clearing the skies out, another return to dry air, and hopefully some cooler temps unlike what we're seeing right now. Now we're going to shoot down into the Caribbean because as we all know, that is the elephant in the room. It is still highlighted on National Hurricane Center's charts at a 30% chance of formation over the next seven days. We've been advertising on the control model specifically of the Euro for the last two to three days now. It has anticipated a bit of slower development with this, which is the key. I'll explain more as we go further into the video. Slower development in a possible track to the west as opposed to going up and out of the Caribbean or back to the east like I've seen on a couple of different sources in the weather community. As you track this through to the latter half of the loop, you can see we are anticipating cyclogenesis at about the same time we've been discussing, the 17th, maybe the 18th at the very latest. It starts to get pulled in by that cyclone pushing off the Florida coastline up the mid-Atlantic coast. At this point in the run, you can see a very, very large, broad, but strong low pressure off the Carolina coast moving to the northeast. As it moves further away and that system develops as fast as it is, it is likely to move a little bit quicker as well, riding the polar front jet up to the north, deepening down and creating widespread significant weather for our folks in the mid-Atlantic states and eventually the northeast. Because of this, the euro has a very interesting trend on its 12Z run, which echoes what the control member has been trying to tell us for the last couple days. If you look down there in the Caribbean, we have a 999 millibar tropical depression, more likely a mid-grade tropical storm, according to this iteration of the euro. And as it loses that northernmost influence, look at how it wants to boomerang back to the west, and the Euro alarmingly wants it to develop into a full-fledged hurricane. Now, guys, this makes a lot of sense. It's something I've been seeing in our synoptic scale dynamics over the last several days now, since about Wednesday of this week. If you look out there on the mean sea level pressure product, we have high pressure coming in behind that next El Nino system that's going to hit us here in Florida, work its way through the Gulf Coast, and then exit out into the western Atlantic. Next, if you look upstream from there, we have our next frontal system coming in. So this creates the perfect perfect and the most textbook setup for a remnant system to try to get its act together and move to the west, maybe deepening down into an organized tropical system. The euro may be a little bullish on this run. I do anticipate we are going to see fluctuations. We've seen a lot of dramatic adjustments over the last few days now, and I don't think this is going to be the end-all be-all, but the main reason I want to bring this up is, number one, we've been projecting it across the weather community to head up, if not east. And I've been trying to mention, guys, that this has the potential to linger down there and marinate over those waters and then get picked up and moved to the west like a lot of our systems have done so down there. And now it looks like the operational model is ebbing with the control member of the European. So 
it's very interesting to see this, but I do anticipate change. We're now going to move into our 12Z control member, and as you can see, we have development down there in the southern Caribbean moving to the north as a tropical depression, maybe a tropical storm. It loses that grab of its northernmost system, that low pressure affecting us here in the southeast. It's very wonderful that this model has the color coding that it does because you can see at this point, that area of low pressure does have a handle on it, but as you go through the next couple of panels, notice how they drift apart, and eventually that path of least resistance, that channel of lower pressure moves up to the north as well. And as such, what do these systems want to do? They want to follow the prevailing wind flow. So now the control member, which it has been doing over the last couple days, wants to track it to the west, keeping it fairly weak, getting picked up by that next frontal system moving across the southeast. And then hopefully, as that next strong area of high pressure comes down, it's going to smother it and suppress it completely and wash it out. And we get good weather down here in the southeast as a result of that massive high pressure. So now it's a bit of a toss up. Our control member and our operational model, the ensembles and the op model, have it moving west. Now it's a game of is it going to organize and is it going to strengthen and punch through that high pressure or is it going to stay fairly weak down there in the Caribbean and then wash out once it encounters that gigantic force field coming in across the south. This is also concerning. If you come over to our 12Z probabilities, and I noticed this last night in 12Z yesterday, we have seen an increase in the development chances down there in the southern Caribbean at 120 hours out. Take a look at that, guys. We're up to 80 percent chance now that a tropical depression is likely to form and at 144 hours this remains the same kind of marinating down there and that's exactly what I think is key and when I show you the upper levels of the environment we don't want to skip out on those I'll show you exactly why we have two possible end results here and I can get behind either or it's really going to depend on the timing Again, if you track this through time, a lot of our probabilities do think it could eject off to the east-northeast, moving across Dominican Republic and Haiti, but if you go towards the very tail end of the loop, notice how our tropical depression probabilities do kind of linger down there for an extended period of time, hovering at about the 30-35 percentile, drifting to the west-northwest. If you come over to our GFS members, you have the control member in the top left, and you look across the rest of the GFS ensemble members, you can see that even the GFS, despite what the operational model has been advertising for several days now, is kind of on board with this one or two possible solution and result. If you track this through time, half of the ensembles do have it moving up and out of the Caribbean. Half the ensembles do have it tracking to the west. Even our control member has it kind of stalling out near Jamaica, Haiti, and the Cuba, wandering to the west very briefly and then getting picked up by that next frontal system. It's very difficult to notice on all these different panels because we do have 30 members of the GFS to look at here, but if you look and you try to pause the video, and I do recommend pause the video if you'd like, if you watch, 50% of the members have it going up, 50% of the members do have it slowing down and moving to the west, and I'll show you why the timing is going to be critical with two more products. Now we're on to our Canadian ensembles because the Canadian model, the operation model does keep this fairly weak, but it also echoes the same sentiments as the euro. It forms it up, tries to punch it north, it stalls out, losing that northernmost influence, and then drifts to the west. However, in this solution today, it has it actually washing out as it moves through Nicaragua and Honduras. We don't want that either because they're already having enough rain to do battle with as we speak. But again, we're just going to explore possibilities here. As you take the Canadian model through time, you can see if this system develops fast and kind of coincides with that area of low pressure moving across the southeast and eventually to the east north northeast, it will be picked up, scooted across the Dominican Republic and Haiti, potentially affecting the Turks and Caicos and the southernmost Bahama Islands, and out to sea, posing no harm or any sensible foul to anybody else besides maybe Bermuda. If this system does linger, if our southeast low pressure system decides to move out a lot faster and evacuate the region quicker, notice how the Canadian model also picks up on this two possible solution. On November 20th, notice how we still have a few members agreeing we could see cyclogenesis down there. This is the same system. It's not a separate system expected to develop. This is the same one that is expected to possibly meander down there and not really do a whole lot in terms of forward progress. Notice as you track the Canadian model through time, if it does does marinate down there a little bit longer, the members do want it to track to the west-northwest with a few impact in the Cayman Islands, Cuba, moving into the Gulf, and then eventually washing out as it encounters that next major frontal system. So we do have two possible end results here. 
All right, before we wrap up the video, we're going to look at our 250 millibar flow. We're going to look at the jet, the synoptic scale, and I would say the macro scale pattern for that matter, because this is what's dictating a lot of what happens not only with our tropical system, but with that El Nino type system that's going to affect us here in the southeast and along the Gulf Coast. So this is where we stand right now. This is moving into tonight, Sunday, Zero Zulu, which would be 8 p.m. our time. As you track this through, you can see that we are anticipating development of that system across the south. Take a look at how our sub tropical jet kind of moves west to east. Then there's a massive negatively tilted trough here that kind of moves across the Gulf Coast into the Gulf of Mexico. And that is where we're anticipating development of our system. As such, we get a little bit of deepening in our subtropical jet, which is going to help to intensify that system at the surface. We also have a major shortwave trough or increased vorticity, I should say, at 500 millibars just above this. As you quickly track it through time, and we get that other cutoff feature down there off the west coast, which is likely to bring some flooding conditions to California. We haven't forgotten about you guys down there. This is where things get a little tricky. So we do expect we're going to start seeing cyclogenesis and formation of that tropical entity in the Southern Caribbean. If you look at the timestamp, this is the 16th going into the 17th. So as such, we are thinking that that's when we are most likely going to see that disturbance start to form up. This is where it gets tricky, guys. Again, if it decides to form up quick and start moving at a faster pace, if you look at the way the jet is oriented down there across the Southeast, this is why it is likely to get picked up and shot out of the Caribbean and out to sea towards Bermuda more than likely. If it decides to linger, look across the desert southwest at how strong of a jet max we have moving through there. Because of that cutoff entity, we are expecting energy of the polar front jet to interact with our subtropical jet, increasing that channel of winds above 150 knots. That's a very powerful jet, guys. And as such, not only is it very strong winds, it's going to move fast through the upper air pattern. With strong winds and with jet maxes, what happens? We see amplitude increases or strengthening of our long wave features and this is the second key to what this system might do. Let's say the second end result, it decides to take its time out there in the Southern Caribbean. As such, with that jet max moving through, notice how our trough begins to deepen across central Conus, bringing our next bonafide cold frontal boundary across the deep south towards Florida, as we mentioned on the first panel of the 12Z Euro. And with that trough building in, the atmosphere has to respond, so we get a ridge out there in the Atlantic and across the eastern Caribbean. Now, if you look at the way the pattern's set up, we have our trough moving into the eastern parts of the United States and a massive subtropical ridge beginning to form off to the east of where our potential cyclone could be. Now, if you were to make a projected forecast out of this, I'll clear my ink and you draw in the lines and follow the streamlines, it is likely to track up and out like this. Now, guys, I'm not forecasting a hurricane to come out of this. I'm not forecasting a potential landfall. All I'm saying is that there are two possible end results. And regardless, we really need to keep an eye on this for our folks out there in Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, and maybe even the southeastern United States, particularly southern Florida, because of the secondary result we could possibly see. Again, if it does decide to form up faster and start to move to the north as our low pressure center exits the southeast, it will get drawn up and it will move up to the east-northeast and be a problem mainly to the Dominican Republic, Haiti, maybe a rainmaker to Jamaica and the Bahama Islands. If it decides to marinate down there, like what National Hurricane Center has kind of alluded to in their discussion, that it is not likely to move very fast, it will more than likely marinate out there in the southern and central Caribbean, this gives the opportunity for the jet stream to reorient, change the upper air pattern, the steering flow with this, and create this second end result. Alrighty, folks, I know this was a little bit fast paced with a lot of information to digest, but we're going to go ahead and wrap up the video. I wish I could continue to talk more or perhaps go live to discuss this a little bit further with you guys, but I do have a lot of plans later today and tomorrow, so I'm unable to dedicate the time to provide these video updates or those live stream updates as I typically do, so I do apologize for that. Nevertheless, folks, I do hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you continue to enjoy your weekend wherever it is you may be tuning in from. We'll definitely see you again soon, maybe as early as tomorrow afternoon if these updates and these trends continue to progress over the next 24 hours. We may break live late in the day tomorrow to discuss exactly what it is we're seeing and continue to elaborate on these two possible end results. We'll see you again for sure on Monday for our next 6 p.m. segment and our Monday Night Tropics talk where we could be digesting even more information as we get closer and closer to game time, i.e. the 17th or the 18th of November. We'll We'll also be discussing what happens in the Gulf of Mexico because it looks like that situation is ramping up quickly based on the trends we've seen across the board with all of our models. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you for taking some time out of your day to tune in to Weather Center. We'll see you again soon. Until next time, this is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.